This is the Extra Point Podcast from Arizona's family. Well, it's kind of a, uh, I guess, a sad week, but also a happy week here in the Valley of the Sun. One of our favorite athletes of all time is leaving us, but I don't, I don't, I think he's still going to be around town a little bit. But he's, he's moving on. He's moving up in the world, and he's staying in hockey. The, the one, the only Shane Doan joins us here in the Extra Point Donor. Great to see you. Why, why was it time for you to, uh, I guess, spread your wings a little bit and join the Maple Leafs organization? Uh, well, I, you know what? It was one of those things that an opportunity came up that was just, uh, I'm really good friends with Brad Trulieving. And uh, and then obviously, uh, my family's a little bit older. Everyone's a little bit older. And it's a situation where we can kind of, my wife and I can kind of be in and out of town. Um, the kids, my youngest is 17 now. And, uh, and, the, and the older ones can help out. But on top of that, it was an opportunity to join a historical franchise that's, I think, on the cusp of having a chance to win it all. And, and that's always special. And as an athlete, to have that opportunity uh, to now no longer be an athlete, but to be part of an organization like that is is pretty special. How much do those competitive juices still flow here? <laughs> it, it's fun to win. Uh, you know, I just came back from the IIHF at the World Championships and uh, had a blast over there. We won gold, and it's just it's something that you enjoy. And when you when you do something competitive, you want to do it at the highest level, and you want to be able to do it at the for you know with a chance to win. And uh, I'm excited. And and we think about since you hung up the skates, uh, the different things you've done working at the NHL, working for the Coyotes, working for Team Canada. How much has that sort of road kind of led you to this moment? Well, I think without a doubt, though, those things were huge. Uh, working at the league for three years, um, working with, uh, you know, Colin Campbell and Chris King, Rod Pasma and that group, uh, Kay Whitmore at the Hockey Ops was was absolutely something I enjoyed so much. And I got to learn a lot. Was that all the GM meetings and the major events for the league? And so you get to kind of see the behind the scenes, kind of um, the way things work, which was fun. And then working here at the Coyotes, obviously, Mr. Murillo and and Javier giving me an opportunity to work on that side and work with them and then working with Bill and, and, and Andre Tierney, who I, I truly believe is, is probably one of the premier coaches and, and he's going to be a guy that for the next, you know, 15, 20 years dominates the coaching ranks in the NHL. I think he's, he's amazing and getting the chance to work with those guys was really special. Yeah, what 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 makes Bear so good? Because when he came to town, I remember interviewing him, and I, I I thought I don't really know what he said, but I like this guy a lot. So why <laughs> why does he resonate so well inside inside that dressing room? You know what? He gets human nature, I, and I think that's the whole point of a coach. As a coach, you need to be able to understand human nature, and you have to understand the way people work, and what your job is to get the most out of the people that you're working with, and. He does that. He understands humans. He understands the way that the dressing room works. And he sees the game the right way, too. I, I mean, <laughs> I think he sees the game the right way. Other people may disagree, but he sees the game the right way. And that's probably as as big as anything is his ability to read people's ability to read the game. Um, and he just he's a good man. And it works. You've been vocal about your support of the Coyotes, and obviously when, in the last couple uh, weeks here we've had the, the vote fail in Tempe and a lot of concerns about the future of the franchise. I mean, you have been through that. You went through that your entire career, but you, you've said you still think hockey can work in the Valley. Do you, do you see the Coyotes thriving here long term? Oh, I, I, I do, and I, and I, without a doubt, I do. And, and yeah, I I believe the Coyotes work not just well here, but but actually be, can become one of those staple franchises in the league. I think that the city itself is just an absolute juggernaut with what's going on in it. And and with that, I don't think there's any real sports league that would ever want to leave a city like Phoenix just because of the growth and because of the ability to attract people to come here. Um, it's incredible. And, and the hockey market and the fans, we've put them through a lot. The Coyotes have put them through a lot, and they remain faithful, and they remain coming out and supporting. And I think that that it's, it's right there, and we just got to figure out a way to, to get it kind of over this next hurdle. And once that happens, then uh, it would be really exciting. How, how, how much more patient do you think the NHL at large can be, though, here with, <laughs> with, with the arena situation? I guess, I guess they've been pretty patient. You were pretty patient. Yeah, I, I think that is, without a doubt, Gary and Bill Daly have been absolutely phenomenal with their patience and, and trying to make something work. Um, I think the league itself is it understands the situation of, of how valuable Phoenix is as a city. Um, 
and so there's an element of patience there but yeah we have to find something out we have to figure something out we have to do something to get uh on an even playing field with everybody else and if that happens then then it's going to be exciting yeah for sure and i'm i, I remember the excitement of, of of 2012 in the western conference finals against the la kings and i'm right next to our tape room before my time here We've got the whiteout video that's kind of fun to go <laughs> go pull there. But as you look back at your time with the Coyotes, and you were all in, you stayed here the uh, the entire career. But did, did you had a chance to go to Toronto once? What was what was the emotions like of deciding whether or not to go up there and try to maybe win a cup or, or stay here and, and stick it out? You know what? We just came off of finishing the conference finals the year that I, I spoke with them. Um, we'd lost to the LA Kings, which still bugs me but they, they had a great team and they had a great run and um but we thought we were close here and that really was it that was i thought mike smith had just displayed being the, as good a goalie as there was in the nhl we had a veteran group on the back end that were really capable of of shutting the people down and we have enough depth up front that we could score and so we were excited about what we were doing we had some young guys with uh, keith yandel and, and oliver ekman larson on the back end that were coming in michael bodker and so things were looking good, and it was interesting to talk in, uh, with Toronto a little bit and to kind of pick their brain on a couple things. But realistically, my dream and goal had always been to win the Stanley Cup in Arizona at that time, and uh, that was something that I thought we were close to doing. Obviously, the, the lockout hurt us a lot. The lockout not playing that next year hurt us a lot, and, uh, and then something changed, and, and it, was, it never worked. Well, and you look at uh, Austin Matthews, uh, uh, an Arizona kid up there in Toronto. What would it mean to potentially hoist a Stanley Cup standing next to him and watch him do it as well? Oh, my goodness. Uh, winning getting your name on a Stanley Cup in any way is something that I think every hockey player dreams of, and that's the goal, and that's kind of your, what drives you all the time. And Austin is just – he's an incredible young man that has become, you know, kind of one of the names in – in our sport, not just a name, but for one of the names. It's, you know, him and McDavid and probably, you know, Kale McCarr. There's probably three or four guys that are at that top of the echelon. And those guys are so important and so valuable. So uh, we got to figure out a way to make that work. And we got to figure out a way to do something that would be real special. I'm thinking Stanley Cup on the top of Cam I don't want to get the cart before the horse here. But uh, I'm thinking Stanley Cup on the top of Camelback Mountain, maybe. I could help. <laughs> we could have a parade here on 3TV in the summer. We're always looking for programming. Well, I, if if we can ever figure out a way to do that, that would be great. I'd enjoy that every minute of it. What 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 do you think? It, what do you think it'll take? What, what's what's sort of your role up there in Toronto, and what are you sort of looking at as far as the way the league's going, and uh, what Toronto needs to get over the hump? Because we know how star it's. They're kind of are they kind of like the Suns up there, or is it is it even crazier? Toronto w waiting for a Stanley Cup. Oh, it's quite a bit crazier. <laughs> quite a bit crazier. <laughs> um it's it's great it's it's exciting i mean the whole the whole city obviously of toronto and the the maple leafs are one of those franchises for a league that are kind of the emblem of the league um the way they're iconic team in the league they've they've kind of you know you go through the nfl and this in the major league baseball and there's the yankees and there's the cowboys and those are kind of the teams that kind of um are talked about probably more than than most other teams, and, and Toronto is out for the NHL. And if they can find a way to win there, it would be really special. And uh, it's been a while, so we got to figure it out. So will we still see you around town a little bit, up at the uh, up at the uh, Ice Den? Will you still be skating? Will you be down here in the summers? I guess maybe more down in the winters, I guess now. <laughs> you found your spot to go yeah, in the summers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we'll definitely be around. Um, obviously, this is home for our family, and this is where my kids are, and so – my wife and I'll find ways to be around here quite a bit at the same time uh, for the next little bit here. Got to find a way to, if I can do anything to help, we're going to do everything we can. And, and just for, I mean, was it, was it, was there any for you kind of stepping away from the franchise because Josh is there right now? What went into the whole idea of, you know, still being a part of the franchise and, and having him in the franchise? That's, that's obviously a huge, huge part of it as well. There, there's no question about it. He's, He's an incredible young man that I'm so proud of. Um, I wasn't involved in drafting him. Um, they made sure made sure that I stayed out of that. I uh, had nothing to do with that. And now with him signing this last March, um, him coming into the organization on a on a real, you know, signing a contract, it's it's going to be good for 
for me to step away a little bit and for him to have his space and to be who he is. Um, he knows uh, that he's got a long ways to go and that he's he wants to work and do everything he can to get there, but he knows it's going to be tough. Well, he's already he's already displaying captain tendencies, so uh, a chip off the old block <laughs> there. Uh, final question is: uh, You're up in Colorado, at a, is up at a wedding. Is 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 Bissonette up there? Are you guys you guys shooting some more episodes for the show? No, no, no. I think he's. I think the league's got him pinned down somewhere. Um, so uh, I'm assuming he's probably in Vegas right about at this point, and uh, he's pretty excited about uh, you know what he's doing. Is it incredible to see what he's been doing like to be you know it's just it's fun to watch his his kind of career at post hockey grow the way it has it's been a lot of fun did you ever think that you would see paul bissonette and wayne gretzky in the same panel breaking down playoff <laughs> hockey <laughs> and and biz does a really good yes. job like he doesn't like he he obviously has an element to him that is uh charisma and the, and the comedy side of it but he's really smart, and him and I discuss and talk about hockey, and I'm always blown away with his understanding of the game and his knowledge of the game and the way he views it. And he doesn't get the credit because he is he kind of has the the huge, huge personality when he's on TV, and that's it's so fun to watch, and I'm so proud of him, and I think he's just done a great job. Well, I miss those uh, I miss those little skits that you guys did. I think you taught him everything yeah. new, but it's uh, it it really does make hockey. Uh, just so much fun to have guys like Biz, guys like yourself involved. And, um, yeah, sad to see you moving on, but glad you're still going to be around. And, uh, you know, when you're in town, you know, we've always got a spot for you here at Arizona's Family if you want to pop in and uh, in studio and talk a little hockey. I will be doing that. I promise I'll be doing that. The Extra Point Podcast is a production of 3TV, CBS5, and azfamily.com in Phoenix, Arizona.